A very good morning to you all. I'm Kalida Supaidai. With me is Dr. John Jothan Samak, co panelist of the program. We, on behalf of Mizoram University and our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor K.R.A. Sambasibaraoji, welcome you to this webinar on the importance of symbiotic microorganisms in drug discovery. Today, we are pleased to have with us Dr. Marcelino Guitrez as research person who will deliver the lead talk in the uh, in a short while. Dr. Guitrez is presently working as scientist and coordinator, Center for Biodiversity and Drug Discovery, Institute for Scientific Research and Technology Services of Panama, Republic of Panama. Welcome, Dr. Guitrez, and Tiwai from Mizoram. Okay, uh, I'm gonna share my PowerPoint. Uh, actually, before that, I, I'd like to introduce you to our participants. A brief introduction I'd like to give to our participants who may not be knowing you, sir. Dr. Guitares obtained his PhD degree in organic chemistry in the year 2005 from the University of Santiago de Compostela in Spain, working on the isolation and structural determination of marine natural products under the supervision of Dr. Ricardo Riguera. From 2008, he conducted a postdoctoral study at the Chief Institution of Oceanography from the University of California, the Bill Garrick Lab, working on anti cancer natural products in marine cyanobacteria. In 2008, Dr. Goethe joined IndicaSet as a staff scientist in the chemistry unit. And since 2013, he has been coordinator of the Center for Biodiversity and Drug Discovery. At IndigaSet, Dr. Goetherez has developed a research line studying symbiotic bacteria associated to different hosts such as octocorals, frogs, and fungus growing ants as new sources of metabolites with biomedical potential. Dr. Goetherez, also has actively participated as a professor of the Indicaset Acharya Nagarjuna University graduate program in biotechnology and as an invited professor at the master's in chemistry program at the University of Panama. In 2010, he was awarded the third world Academy of Sciences award for young scientists and selected as a member of the national system of researchers of the Republic of Panama awarded by Senasi. He has published many research papers in Journal of International Repute. Now, I would like to request Dr. Guterres to present his talk. Okay, thank you, Dr. Kalidas, for this uh, kind presentation and also for the invitation to this uh, web seminar. So I'm gonna be uh, talking about the, the importance of symbiotic systems uh, in drug discovery. So my talk is going to be divided in five parts. Uh, I will give a brief introduction uh, about symbiosis and natural products. And then I will talk about the symbiotic systems that we are studying here at Indicasat in Panama. And the first example will be uh, coral holobionts, and then uh, fungus growing ants and their associated bacteria. And finally, I will talk about uh, frog symbiotic systems and their associated bacteria. So uh, when we find things like this in nature where very similar compounds are produced by very different organisms like olamide A, this is a uh, cytotoxic compound that was isolated uh, from a sponge in the genus Tionella. And we see here a very similar uh, nucleus, same nucleus. Uh, this is pederin, and this is a defensive compound that produces a horrible pain to the predator of these insects in the genus Pyderus. So uh, this opened a debate regarding the real biosynthetic origin of these compounds. And people started speculating that very likely the real producers of these uh, compounds are bacteria or microorganisms and now actually the spawns for the insect. 
So later in 2014, the group of Dr. John Peel in Germany found out using uh, metagenomics techniques that onamide A actually is being uh, produced by a bacterium in the genus Entotionella that was associated to the sponge. So the real uh, biosynthetic origin of this compound is microbial and not from the marine invertebrate. So we have a, a, another example here. Jandelis is an uh, FDA approved anti-cancer uh, drug. So it's used for ovarian cancer and soft tissues or coma. And this compound was first isolated from a tunicate. So later, uh, the group of uh, Dr. David Sherman from the University of Michigan found that the real producer of this compound is a symbiotic bacteria that is associated to the tunicate. And also, uh, they, they found that there are different uh, strains of, of bacteria that were produced in very similar compounds. So in this case, also, the, the really uh, producers are the bacteria and not the, the marine microorganisms. And uh, here we can see some examples of metabolites. Uh, this is Taxol, is a very known drug. And Taxol was first isolated from a plant. And then we, uh, it, it was found that it is produced by the fungi, by endophilic fungi. And in the case of this uh, Campotensin and Mitansin, these compounds are produced by plants. And it's been found that they are really produced by uh, endophilic bacteria associated to these plants. So in this table here, uh, we can see uh, that many of the uh, marine natural products that are approved by FDA, that they are all in the market in different therapeutic areas, maybe in uh, ma mainly in cancer. Uh, so these compounds uh, that are in the market were first isolated from a marine invertebrate or marine microorganisms. And then it was found that, that some of them are really produced by a microorganism. So there is a trend to find that these compounds that are uh, drugs in the market are being produced by microorganisms, by symbiotic uh, microorganisms. So given this trend, we decided to study uh, several symbiotic systems that we have available in Panama. And uh, we, we've been studying the uh, octocorals and their associated bacteria, and also frogs and their associated bacteria and fungus growing ants. So, uh, and uh, we use uh, microbial uh, interaction as a tool for drug discovery. And based on the fact that interactions between mixed population of microorganisms are the rule rather than the exception in nature. So uh, the first, uh, first project was carried out by my student Librada and collaborators in the University of California, San Diego. Uh, Will Namur uh, uh, makes some uh, of the work that I'm going to present uh, today. So uh, in this figure, we can see uh, what is called the coral holobion. So we see uh, this part here represent the coral and these uh, green uh, things here are a microalgae that is a obligate symbiont of the coral. And here we, we see a mucus layer and this mucus layer harbor a, a very complex microbial community. So for the coral holobion is, is the whole, and then uh, the algae produce nutrients for, for the coral and the bacteria in the mucus uh, produce uh, nitrogen for the coral and also a secondary metabolite that defend the coral against uh, uh, pathogens. And the coral provide uh, uh, you know, a house for, for these uh, associated microbes. So uh, there is a fact in the literature, if you make a search, you will find that there is 
many, many reports on antimicrobial activity of coral associated bacteria, but uh, there is very, very few uh, knowledge on the chemistry that is behind this microbial interaction. So this, this is a field that needs to be uh, uh, tackled, needs to be studied, and it's very, very uh, uh, open. So we make a search in the literature and, and here we can see some of the few metabolites that have been isolated from portal associated bacteria. Maybe today, this is one 2018, maybe today we have a few more, but not that much. So this is a, a, a very unexplored field. So we decided to study uh, coral associated bacteria and we focus in, in the genus uh, Pseudoteromonas that uh, we collected many corals for bacterial isolation. And you can see here in this phylogeny, in this upper part, there is a, a clay of the uh, um, non-pigmented uh, strains. And here, there are the pigmented strains. And uh, what you see here, these colors are the result of an antimicrobial assay. So here is, uh, uh, you can see of more pure the color, uh, the bigger the, the antimicrobial activity. And here, these numbers represent different strains, target strains that we have. So we have uh, uh, gram-positive bacteria like Bacillus, Staphylococcus vibrio, also uh, gram-negative bacteria also, and, and we have some fungi. And as you can see here, the, the clay of the uh, non, of the pigmented strains actually, they have a very, very interesting antimicrobial profile. So we choose one of these uh, strains to study, and uh, we, we selected uh, this uh, Sedulturomonas OT59 that was collected from a coral from Coiba National Park, which is in the Pacific coast of Panama. And we isolated this uh, bacteria from Lectogoria alba. And uh, we have here also a, a strain of penicillin that was isolated from an uh, eel coral. And we found out that uh, the bacteria inhibit uh, uh, the growth of the, the fungi, as you can see here. Okay, but we found something very interesting. So when we have the antimicrobial assay in the dark, we see this phenotype. So we, we see that there is inhibition of the fungi in the dark. But when we performed the same experiment in the light, we found that there was no inhibition. And in the, in the, cycle, the using cycle of day and night, uh, we found there is a little bit of inhibition. So this is very, very uh, confusing. So when normally when the students see this kind of thing, they say, ah, oh, this doesn't work, they threw it out. <laughs> they threw it out, but, but uh, I'm glad my student didn't do that in this case, so it called our attention. Actually, uh, the, this work was done by Will Namur. And uh, also we, we make uh, this assays using all this collection of uh, fungi that include marine and, and terrestrial fungi. And you can see that there is an uh, inhibition in the dark, but there is not inhibition in the day. So this phenotype was consistent with all this group of fungi. Only this, uh, with this fungi here, was active uh, in the day and in the, in the night. So, but in general, this, this behavior was very consistent. So, and we, we have a hypothesis for this. You know that corals feed at night and they open the polyps to feed, you know, with uh, the, the materials that are in the, in, the, in the water. And they are more exposed at night to the attack of, of pathogenic fungi. So they use these uh, defenses uh, at night that are, are more useful at night than uh, in the daytime. So this is where we, we think is going on.
And we decided to study uh, this behavior using uh, MALDI uh, imaging. So I'm going to explain briefly how this works before we go to the, the results. So here we, we have the MALDI target plate, and we made an inoculum, initial inoculum, and we, we have, as you can see here, this is the bacteria colony. This is a real picture of, of the show. And then we cover uh, the interaction with the matrix. And then uh, we irradiate the area that we want to study. And what we want to study is the inhibition zone. And we irradiate all the inhibition zone uh, where the bacteria and the fungi are. And then uh, we obtain uh, hundreds of mass specs that represent all the compounds that are in this inhibition zone. So with the uh, program, we are able to, to give a different color to a different compound. So we can see the distribution of different compounds in the area, as you can see here. So this is how MALDI imaging works. And here, this is a, a real example. This is the MALDI target plate. And we, we can see here the interaction in the dark and there is inhibition, as you can see. And in dark light cycles, there is a little bit of inhibition. And in the light, there is no inhibition. So uh, you can see here the expression of, of different metabolites, like this one here uh, is not present in the light. It's very, very uh, strong here in the dark. And it's more clear in this. Uh, metabolite alteromide B that is 495 uh, mass. Very uh, strong presence of this compound in the dark and there's a little bit in the cycle. And in the light, there is no production of this compound. So uh, we found out that these compounds are alteromides. Uh, they're replicating this using the, the, the masses of these compounds on databases. And here, in this part, we can see bromalteropromide. There are compounds that doesn't suffer this change in, in the light and in the dark. So they are pre present or they're produced uh, all the time. So uh, we found out the alteromides uh, suffer an internal rearrangement, like internal cycle additions in the presence of light. So in the light, we have this form of the compound that have antifungal activity. And in the night, we have this comp, sorry, in the day, we have this compound that uh, suffered the rearrangement, and this compound is not active against fungi. So, this is uh, kind of solve the mystery about why the compound is active during the, during the night and not active during the day. Okay. So, uh, also, uh, we make uh, the MALDI experiment. And MALDI imaging experiment, and we focus on the metabolites that were produced by the fungi. As you can see here, uh, these compounds are, are in the area where the fungi is. And uh, we found that uh, bacterial metabolites or alteromites regulate the production of some of the fungal metabolites. Like you can see here in the dark, where is, uh, the bacteria is producing uh, or the active compound. There is no presence of the metabolite. And in the dark light, there is a little bit of compound. And in the, in the day, there is a lot of compound. And this is a control. Uh, as you can see, there is a, a, a produce, you know, without the, the presence of the bacteria. Same thing we found with this uh, uh, metabolite here and with this metabolite here. So the, the bacteria is kind of, Regulating, upregulating the production of this fungal metabolite through the, 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 the chemistry that it produced. And uh, also, uh, we analyzed uh, the extracts from the bacteria and from the fungi, and we used this uh, MS molecular uh, network, uh, you know. And this is a, a GMPS-based dereplication uh, platform. And we used to, to 
actually to the replicate or identify the different compounds that were present uh, in the interactions that were being produced by these microorganisms. And we found thermites, estatins, citrinine, bromoterochromites, and citrinidines are being uh, produced. And some of them are active, you know. Um, okay. So let's go to the second project. Uh, this is uh, based uh, on frog and their associated bacteria. And it was done by my student, Christian Martin, here in Panama, also in collaboration with Dr. Dorsting Group, San Diego. And uh, as many of you know, the, um, the amphibian has been going through a catastrophic uh, uh, declines around the world because uh, a chytrid fungi that is producing this decline. So uh, in many places, there is an, uh, like a 90% declines of the amphibian population because it's chytrid fungi. So this is a real disaster with the amphibians. But as uh, some places where the fun fungi go, the chytrid fungi go, it produces uh, declines in the amphibian population, but some species uh, kind of are resistant to the pass of the fun fungi. So some studies uh, found out that the, the frogs that are resistant actually harbor in their skin uh, bacteria that are able to inhibit the growth of the chytrid fungi, as you can see here. And, and they uh, believe that this uh, species may be resistant to the chytrid fungi in part because they have uh, bacteria that protect them against the chytrid fungi. So uh, I make a search in the literature to see what compound has been isolated from the bacteria associated to frogs that are resistant to BD. And we only found these four compounds with uh, activity against the chytrid fungi. So this is also an unexplored uh, field. So we decided to collect some frogs in different places of Panama, in Fortuna Forest Reserve, also in Volcan, and also in La Amistad International Park. And we collected uh, seven species of frogs for bacterial isolation. And here we can see the phylogeny. Uh, we obtained it 439 uh, uh, isolates. And using a, a fingerprint, uh, we, we selected 201 uh, strains for 16x sequencing. And then we found out that, that uh, the phyla, the phylum with more uh, uh, with more strain, it actually was a proteobacteria. And in proteobacteria, the family Pseudomonadacea was uh, the have more represent, representative. So we studied uh, these uh, 201 uh, isolates and we tested in an antifungal assay against uh, Aspergillus fumigatus. And here you can see, uh, this is the, the positive control that is cyclohexamide, this is an antifungal compound. And this is the control, uh, only ethanol, there is no activity. And this is the, the antifungal profile of all these strains. And this one here uh, presented the bigger inhibition halo. So uh, this is a Pseudomonas chicori. And with this, uh, because this is uh, the, the more active, we decided to study this strain. And here we can see the frog, uh, Crogaster crassidigitus. And here's the, the so, uh, so the monachicore inhibiting Aspergillus uh, fumigatus. So there is uh, the production of some chemicals here that, uh, that have antifungal activity. And we made the same study using Mali imaging. And we were able to, uh, to see different metabolites that were present in the inhibition zone using uh, this technique, as you can see here, different colors, uh, different masses. And uh, so we make an extract of this 
part where there is the inhibition to see which compounds are, are here, we may extract. And then uh, we analyzed it using GMPS molecular networking. And we found out the same metabolite we see in the imaging experiments were uh, found in this uh, uh, molecular networking dereplication. And we found out there were mass satellites and viscosin that are very similar lipopeptides that, are, that were present in the inhibition zone. And so we make a, like a manual annotation of these compounds using MSMS. And we uh, isolated uh, from the extra, we isolated pure viscosin using a chromatography techniques like HPLC. And we obtained pure viscosin. And we uh, confirmed the structure using a mass spectrometry and NMR. So the, the, the identification that we made using a molecular networking was totally correct. So as we have the pure viscosin, we tested uh, against Aspergillus fumigatus, and we found out that this compound uh, have antifungal activity against this fungi, against Aspergillus, as you can see here. And also we tested against uh, uh, the chytrid fungi, and you can see also that viscosin were act, was active against uh, this cutter fungi. So our results support the hypothesis that uh, resist, uh, fructose are resistant to the cutter fungi, in part are resistant because they have bacteria that inhibit the growth of this fungi. Okay, um, then um, I'm going to the third project. Uh, the third example, uh, fungus growing ant, this uh, was carried out by a student, Christopher Boya. And all these students are from the uh, uh, PhD program of Acharya Nagarjuna University in collaboration with Indigasat. So Christopher studied the, the fungus growing ant symbiotic system. And uh, you can see here, uh, this is uh, a nest. This is how the net ants' nets look like. This is supposed to be underground. And this white material here is uh, a fungi that the ants grow like uh, only source of food. And here, uh, this white powder here on the skin of the, of the ant is an actinomycin bacteria. And this is how it looked like when you isolate it and purify it. And here we see a, an, an inhibition experiment. And this uh, here is a pathogenic fungi in the genus Scobopsis. So this fungi is a parasite of the uh, ants crops. So if the fungi destroy the crops, it was a parasite, then it can destroy the ants' nets and destroy uh, uh, really, really uh, big colonies, colonies of ants. So uh, to, to avoid that, the ants use this bacteria to control the growth of Scoboxis. This is kind of a biological uh, control and in a, for their, their agriculture activities. So these ants are farmers and they use uh, co biological control using this bacteria to avoid infection of Escobopsis or this pathogenic or agricultural, agricultural plague. Okay, um, so here's this, uh, how the symbiosis work. This is the ants, so leaf coder ants. And here is the, the, they have a, a mutualism, a positive interaction with the fungi the, uh, sorry, with the bacteria that they keep on the, on the skin. Uh, and also they have a positive uh, uh, mutualism with the fungi that they grow for food. And they have a negative interaction with Escoboxis. And Escoboxis have negative interaction with the uh, pseudonocardia, the actinomycin, and also with the, the, the crops. So this is how, how a very simple uh, image of the symbiosis. So uh, we make a search in the literature uh, for this system, and we only found uh, 18 compounds uh, in this system. So also unexplored. Maybe today we have 
few more compounds, but not that much. And this is a, a figure with some of the chemo types that you will find uh, that are produced by the, this uh, bacteria associated to the ants. So we make the same uh, kind of analysis using MALI EMS. And uh, we found out the, uh, several metabolites present in the inhibition zone. And uh, we found out actually uh, the presence of these uh, macrolides that are uh, the eliophylline family. And this churning that were produced by the, uh, uh, the fungi. Excuse me. using uh, this technique, uh, molecular network. So to tell you a little bit, little bit more about this technique, so you can understand better. So this technique is based on mass spectrometry, MS-MS similarity. So compounds that have a similar MS-MS spectra, actually MS2 spectra, they cluster together. And compounds that are far, uh, they have very uh, dissimilar MS MS spectra. So here we, we have a key here, uh, uh, this is cluster, they are together because they are similar and the edge represent the ions and or the mass of the compounds or they represent metabolites and these, uh, the circles and the edge here are uh, the thicker the edge, the more similar are the compounds. This is how molecular networking works. So as I told you, we, we replicate the eliophylline and ephomycin D and ephomycin A, and uh, we isolated uh, pure eliophylline using HPLC, and we confirmed the structure using mass spectrometry and NMR. So uh, the the identification done using molecular networking was uh, correct, also. And as we have the pure compound, we we tested against a scabopsis and it was not active against uh, uh, this fungi, but it has antibacterial activity. So we think that this eliophylline is used for these ants uh, to avoid uh, infection by bacterial pathogens. Okay, and, and here we have the cherinins. So these compounds were found to be produced by the uh, scoboxis fungi. And interesting, a uh, couple of months after we published this, the final of this compound, uh, another group reported uh, also this compound and they uh, found uh, their ecological role. So this, these compounds uh, inhibit the growth of the actinomycin bacteria that the, the, hands, the, the ants are have in the skin. So this is kind of a chemical warfare going on here. So the bacteria is producing metabolites to kill the fungi, and the fungi is producing metabolites to kill the bacteria. So this, this is very interesting. Okay, um, we make uh, we study a different strain uh, from the system using the same techniques, and we also found a uh, through molecular network in the presence of these actinomycins. The actinomycins are compounds that were already reported in this system, and they are known compounds with a uh, antifungal activity. So very likely these uh, ants are using this compound to, to, to keep uh, escobopsis uh, control. Okay, and um, just to show you one of the uh, manuscript that we're preparing, this kind of a constellation of compounds. Every circle here is a single compound. This is kind of a universe. It's not uh, easy to identify all of them, but we have uh, found in this constellation of compounds, about uh, 32 compounds belong uh, again to 21 molecular families and eight chemotypes. So the, you can see how powerful is the, this techniques. So compounds that cluster together are similar. And if you know one of them, then you know that all of them are similar. So this is very powerful technique to de-replicate uh, natural products.
actually. Okay, and, and as a conclusion, uh, I can tell that our results confirm that the biodiversity of Panama, in particular, symbiotic system, microbial symbiotic system, beyond of its intrinsic value, have an added value that consists in its capacity to produce molecules with potential uh, for drug discovery. Okay, um, here is the uh, research group and the students that made all this work. He, this is Christopher, and uh, Christopher was working with the fungus growing ants. This is Librada that was working with uh, uh, the coral associated bacteria. And I have to say that part of the, the, the work that I presented today was done by Will Namur, that it was, a, well, she was a postdoc in the, in the uh, Peter Dorstein uh, lab. And this is Christian, Christian Martin that has been working with the, the frog associated bacteria. Candelario, this is Candelario is working with frogs also. And Daniel that is working with, uh, also with coral associated bacteria, but I didn't present his results today. So this is my presentation and thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much, you know, very nice presentation. Thank you. I'm gonna start. Yes, yes, yes sir. A very informative and interesting presentation. Hopefully it will uh, tickle our uh, young minds to explore new symbiotic microorganisms in the direction of finding new drugs for human, uh, human welfare. So thank you so much, sir. Now I would like to request Dr. John for uh, passing on the questions and uh, questions to our research person and proposing board of thanks. Anyone, anyone has got questions, no? They can write in questions and answers uh, box. You can just announce that, so so people can ask questions in that. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I have already announced. Dr. John, please. We thank Dr. Marcelino for sparing his valuable time and sharing his valuable knowledge on our topic today. And we also thank our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Sambasiva Rao for arranging this important webinar. We also thank all the, our participants today. And we also have received and for giving the queries to some of them. I am sure our participants today have gained new ideas Yes, from the interesting research findings of Dr. Marcelino and his team. So, and also we would like to inform that certificates of participation will be sent to those uh, participants today. So, uh, Dr. Marcelino, I think we have, if you may, please, there are some questions, queries that are being given here. So, Dr. Marcelino, Coming back to you, have you? I think you must have seen those queries, questions. It's over to you, Dr. Marcelino. Yes. Thank you. Are you able to see the questions? Ah, uh, no. So there is one uh, Q and A uh, in the bottom. No. Uh, can you see that Q and A? Uh, okay, in the chat. Um, okay. I see the questions. Uh, okay, uh, how are alteramides extracted from the bacteria? So we use, um, you know, conventional extraction methods. Um, we get the the colonies of the bacteria. And actually, for the isolation of the alteramides, we use organic solvents. So we grow the bacteria in a culture media. And then we make a, 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 a extraction with organic uh, a solvent that extract the compound. That is how we do it. It's a very uh, conventional extraction method using a natural products chemistry. Okay. Um, The other question is what can be the major drawback while going for drug discovery from severe microorganisms? You know, actually, uh, as I show at the beginning of, of my presentation, uh, some of the drugs that are uh, in the market, uh, 
you know, they are uh, actually produced by symbiotic microorganisms. At the beginning, people thought that they were uh, produced by the microorganisms, but actually uh, it was found that they are of microbial uh, origin. So, I, I, let me let me check something here. I have I answer a question. Um, when uh, can I help you? When uh, un, unfavorable conditions prevail, the symbiotic organisms may destroy the corals. One question. Okay. When unfavorable conditions prevail, the symbiotic organism may destroy the corals. Corals? Ah, corals. Sorry, what, what are the, can, can you repeat please? When unfavorable conditions prevails, unfavorable conditions prevails, uh -huh. will the symbiotic organism may, will destroy the corals? That's what they are asking. Oh, okay. Um, so, you know, uh, in the case of the, of the uh, uh, symbiotic microorganisms, Many of them, uh, you cannot isolate them. Actually, so, my uh, my presumption is that symbiotic organisms are not dangerous uh, organisms for the corals. I think. Ah, no, at all. Uh, they are not, they're, they're, they're not dangerous organisms. They will not spoil the corals. This is my presumption. Is it correct? Symbiotic, uh, uh, they they usually they have a good association, a good symbiosis, like a mutualism. So they protect the coral. Yes, they protect the coral. That's what I was. Uh, uh -huh. They protect the coral from from pathogens. Uh, okay. And uh, what, another question is, uh, what can be the major drawback while going for drug discovery from symbiotic microorganisms? Did you answer this one? The drawback. Uh, okay. Uh, you know, uh, I was uh, uh, actually was trying to, to answer this. Uh, you know, uh, symbiotic microorganisms. Uh, some, some, most of them you cannot isolate it. Cannot be isolated. So uh, you only can find them inside uh, the, 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 you know, the symbiote, like uh, inside the coral or the tunicate. So in the case of uh, the example that I, I gave with the, the Chandeli, there is a drug, anti-cancer drug. They never were able to isolate the, the bacteria. So they have to use metagenomics to find out the gene cluster and the, the biosynthetic uh, route for producing this compound. So this is a, a disadvantage. You know, maybe the, also, maybe I can add something like uh, isolation uh, screening of the compounds and uh, uh, in vitro analysis of those compounds also one of the important uh, time taking process no it is also correct no yes yes another question from chitranjan sen what is the role of cyanobacterial symbiotic association with other microorganisms in the production of any metabolites which can be used in this purpose okay uh... Well, we see that uh, cyanobacteria, actually they have uh, uh, association uh, symbiotic. I don't know if this is a symbiotic association, but some people have found bacteria, like uh, heterotrophic bacteria associated to cyanobacteria. And I don't remember, uh, I have seen a publication uh, describing the role. So I, uh, it's not known, you know, uh, so, uh, cyano uh, also they 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 have associations uh, with um, I don't I don't recall I don't remember any uh, 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 symbiotic as association of cyanobacteria actually they used to be like uh, 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 on their own. Okay, thank you. Another you, question you can is. Mention, uh, uh, you can make maybe uh, you can mention one association maybe uh, yes. I, I don't remember any another question uh, from rajendran actinobacterial from ants can affect the plants where they are associating actinobacteria from ants can affect the plants where they are association, uh, associating 
they mean to say that uh, they can be um, uh, affecting the organism which they are symbiotic no that's what they are um, they are meaning similarly like plants it can also affect the corals and other things no that's what they are asking well uh, you know there the the these uh, fungus growing ants they live in nets on the ground yes they, they don't live in plants yes so uh, the, the the actinobacteria have a negative uh, you know uh, interaction with the the pathogenic fungi that affect the ants but it i don't think it affect the plants because the 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 ants doesn't live in, in trees or plants. They live on the ground. They have the nest on the ground. Yes, yes. Another question from Shanmugam. Narrow or broad spectrum antimicrobial are obtained by coral isolates. Can we obtain narrow or broad spectrum antimicrobials? Can be obtained by the, coral isolates. That's what they are asking. I think it's a broad antimicrobial spectrum. Uh, as I show one slide uh, with that is a broad antimicrobial spectrum. With gram positive, gram negative uh, strains. Okay. Another question from Dev. Sir, will you please once again discuss the molecular networking process? They're asking, can you uh, briefly explain uh, what is molecular networking? Sure. Um, this is a mass spectrometry uh, based technique, actually. MS MS technique, and you you have to record the MS MS spectra of uh, your extract or your compound, and then uh, you know the MS MS spectra is like a fingerprint of the compound, and so uh, if you have a compound with very similar MS MS spectra, then uh, these compounds are uh, structurally similar. And what the, uh, this uh, molecular network do is that it cluster together all the compounds that are similar because they have similar MS, MS spectra. And like you have a cluster of five compounds uh, that have similar MS, MS spectra and you know the identity of one of them, then you know that the whole family is very similar. So that's what we call molecular families. So this uh, you is have, you, you have a database of uh, mass spectrum of uh, various uh, organisms. You, am I right? Oh, yeah. There is a uh, actually uh, there is a, a a platform for for GMPS. If you type GMPS okay. molecular networking in Google, okay. it will take you to the platform, and it's free. You can use it for free, and, yes. and so you can use this uh, uh, powerful technique to de replicate as a, st the, as a standard for uh, unknown organisms when you are testing through mass spectrum you can use that particular uh, uh, standard one to compare and identify the various uh, uh, microbial organisms am i correct uh, this is uh, not uh, uh, molecular networking is not for identifying microorganisms this is for oh. identifying compounds not compounds growth. Compounds, okay, okay. I think that it is clear. And uh, another at a participant, very nice presentation. Is there any antiviral agent found in any animals they are asking, which you are tested? Antiviral. Uh, we are not working uh, with virus, but I think in the near future we will start working with virus. But uh, uh, I show in my introduction uh, several of the marine natural products that have antiviral activity. There is a couple of them. Another question. Uh, any similarities with mosquitoes like frogs and ants related with this work uh, of microbial symbiotic interaction? Any similarities with uh, mosquitoes like frogs and ants related with the work of micro uh, microbial symbiotics? You know, I think all the, the, the organisms have symbiosis, even in, humans, we have uh, symbiotic microorganisms. So many times the role of these uh, microbes are, are not known. But I think mosquitoes, actually they have, I found a paper recently that described uh, a, a bacteria that is associated to the mosquitoes good that has uh, anti-malarial activity actually. So I think 
uh, if we if we you know make uh, an effort to study this we will find this kind of interaction in many many organisms including insects uh, frogs ants you know marine vertebrates all kinds of organisms thank you another question shakuntala what would the possible reason behind the light dependency of the production of the drugs what would be the possible reason behind the light dependency of the production of the drugs okay in that particular case that i show this is a compound that, that is active in the dark both in the light it's not active because it's sulfur and rearrangement an intramolecular rearrangement and the 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 this uh, rearrangement product is not active against fungi so we think that corals is using this at night because they fit at night so they open the polyps and they fit and they are more exposed to to fungal infections that's why they they need this compound at night and not at day okay thank you another question bashkar is there any relation between body coloration of animals and symbiotic organisms is there any relation between body coloration of animals and symbiotic organisms i don't think so okay i don't think so okay thank you and another question uh, it is a nice talk thanks referring to the antifungal bacteria associated with corals do you have any idea on the gene expression of those bacteria with the antifungal activity only in the dark conditions okay we found out that that actually uh, this phenotype is because uh, the compounds change in the light i don't think uh, uh, it is related to gene expression in this particular very particular case i think it depends on the light is it changed because the the uv light you know you yes. radiate the company suffer a rearrangement yes uh, another i think it may be the last question have you done any work on the bapo species and rana tigrina um we have been uh, rana tigrina no and we have uh, some work we are doing some work uh, with uh, frogs metabolites actually that the frogs are producing uh, i think uh, uh, some frogs in the in the genus brinella not bufo but uh, we isolated several compounds so soon we will publish uh, something i think we have already one publication on bufo the analytes and um, but from brinella not from bufo okay another question is there last question it could be what is the role of rhizobium to develop pathogen resistance in host legumes against other diseases what is the role of rhizobium to develop pathogen resistance in host legumes against other diseases actually i, I don't know this, this is not it was not part of my talk and i i, I don't know this if this I, is a symbiosis I, yes, I it is a, it is not connected to your talk but uh, no. dr uh, arindam mukherji has asked this one um, okay i think uh, we have finished the questions john you can uh, uh, conclude the uh, session i think there is one more question so uh, marcelino sure. it is uh, sure. is it possible to produce microorganisms in large scale through in vitro process without symbiosis organism by sarkar from calcutta is possible to produce the microorganisms in large scale through in vitro process without symbiotic organism um some cases it is possible it it is some possible case. microorganism large scale culture is possible but only thing yeah. is symbiotic relations some of the compounds uh, which are been produced during the symbiotic interaction may not be prevailing in the organisms uh, alone am no, i correct I think, no yeah i think that is, is we have an obligate symbiosis yes you can isolate uh, the the microorganism without the host Yes. What what people is doing is something very smart. You cannot isolate the microorganism, but you can isolate the gene cluster. Yes. That produces that, and you can make a heterologous expression to E. coli or any other organisms, and then uh, make uh, this uh, E. coli to produce uh, the carbon that you want using this 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 uh, yes. genomic technique. 
I think there is one more question. Are there any antimicrobial compounds identified from lichens? Uh, I'm sure there are. Um, I don't remember right now because I'm, I don't, I'm not very familiar with lichens, but uh, I know that there are uh, antimicrobial compounds from this group. Uh, uh, another question from Navya. Relating to COVID-19, is there any antiviral drug found out by symbiotic microorganisms? Can symbiotic microorganisms overcome this kind of thing? Uh, she is asking. Do you know? Uh, we don't know. Maybe, uh, but this is so new uh, 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 disease, and actually, uh, you know that uh, test uh, these microorganisms. You need uh, to have the facility. Yes, there may be uh, there may be antiviral drug compounds, but uh, you are not done any analysis for that uh, COVID-19. It is too early for you. Uh, yes. to answer this question. I know about that. I think Navia might have been cl clarified. There may be possible that antiviral compounds will be there, but actually it, uh, the group of uh, Marcelino has not carried out any work uh, in that area, but there is a possibility. Correct? Yes, I, maybe. Yeah, maybe we, you can find something. Uh, I think there is one more question. Uh, uh, are there any antimicrobial compounds identified from uh, this is finished uh, and one more question i just sorry uh, are there any photo protective compounds isolated from coral bacteria symbiosis photo protective compounds well yes. uh, i remember a, a, a couple of this uh, property the, but it's not been uh, found in an in, in uh, microbial so I think it's, it's, we think it's that, being produced that, by the core. They're not found. Okay. I think we are done with questions. Uh, all the questions, uh, Marcelino. Thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, Dr. John will uh, conclude the session uh, uh, with a word of thanks and other uh, concluding remarks. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Marcelino, for answering all our queries. I think our Honorable Vice Chancellor has gone through all each and every respective queries that have been received today. And Dr. Marcelino, as far as his, I think, area of research is concerned, I think he has answered and has given his valuable, I think, uh, information and his knowledge to all the participants today. I think today we have a very good session. We thank immensely Dr. Mar. Marcelo, Marcelino Gutierrez for sparing his valuable time. And also we thank again our Honorable Vice Chancellor for arranging this uh, thing, our system administrator at the university for making this possible to happen. Once again, have a good day, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you, have Marcelo. a good night. Thank, Dr. You. thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. See you. This. Yeah. Yeah. With that, we conclude. John okay, and uh, thank, you. thank you.